Okay, uh, let's start and then we, in case someone else uh, will join, I guess it's not uh, going to be complicated to uh, listen anyway, follow the conversation. First of all, welcome. My name is uh, Anna Meroni and uh, I'm the pleasure to host uh, this uh, first uh, talk of uh, our Design for Food stories. Design for Food Stories are uh, a series of uh, webinars. By now, we hope to have also the possibility to do it in presence sooner or later, but by now are uh, webinars that aim to uh, talk with some people that uh, uh, in a way we consider to be protagonists of uh, food design and food innovation. We decided to start tonight from these two beautiful ladies, which represent a beautiful group of four founders of a beer, <laughs> Ibrida. Ibrida is a beautiful food story, actually. And uh, so I'm really happy to host uh, this group of of uh, uh, very brave and uh, visionary entrepreneurs. So welcome to Akashka and Elisa. Uh, if you like to introduce yourself and of course, uh, tell us the story of Ibrida. Thank you so much for the introduction and thank you so much for the lovely words about Ibrida. Um, should I just uh, directly share my screen? And then we talk about us and we talk about Ibrida. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, do you see the screen? Perfect. Go, go ahead. We are on board. Okay. So hello everybody who joined, good evening or even good night, I guess, to a lot of you. So um, my name is Akanksha. I am, uh, like Anna already mentioned, I'm one of the co-founders and digital strategist for Ibrida. I, I come from India and I actually came to Polymy for a master course, not in food, but in product service system design. And that's where I met Elisa and the other people from Ibrida. And you will hear this story of how we met and uh, how Ibrida came about in, in the next uh, moment. But um, I started off as an architect and then I completed my master in service design. And so now I am uh, working as a service designer in, um, in Tangity, which is a part of Entity Data. And also uh, we are, we're all working together to take Ibrida forward. Hi everyone, thanks to be here. I'm Elisa, I'm a co-founder of Ibrida, as Akansha mentioned before, and I'm also the creative lead of the startup, as we can say. Uh, I'm from Milan, I've studied at Politecnico, and I have a background in product design, but then I specialized in product service system design, where as Akansha said, we, we created this startup and um, I work as well uh, full-time as a UX and service designer. Great. So, um, so this was about us. Now let's really go forward in what is going to be the theme of the next hour, so to say. So as some of you have probably already know that uh, this next hour is going to be about beer and the name of the beer is Ibrida. But then why are we here talking about a beer? Like what is so special about it? Well, Ibrida is a bread beer brewed from surplus bread unsold in the bakeries in Milan. Now, before we get into all the juicy details about the startup, where did it all start? Funnily enough, it all started in Polymy. So we were actually in our final synthesis studio for our master uh, product service system design. And we were given a brief, which just had two requirements, design a startup with to address sustainable development goals and a shared passion. So me and my team, which is, uh, you've already met me and Elisa, but there are two other members who make this team, let's say a lethal combination, which is Francesca and Simone, 
and we came together to understand that maybe we can combine this design brief into a bottle of beer because who isn't passionate passionate about beer right but to be honest we never imagined that we would be able to launch a real beer brand on the market and actually become entrepreneurs this was back in 2018 end of 2018 when we were in the university with this course and let's say 2 years later here we are today talking about this for another master course which is which is unbelievable to be honest now how did we do this how did it happen so we'll today we'll take you through four key phases so first one being problems from problems to opportunities so the idea of a bread beer how did we define a strategy in the real world which is ebida for neighborhoods building a community around our product which is our role as social aggregators and the new avenues that we're exploring today to expand replicate and build our our brand so the problem in italy actually approximately 220000 tons of food is wasted every year and 19% of this food waste can be attributed to bread and if i think about milan alone 3 to 7 kg of bread is wasted every year in different bakeries in the city these these are these numbers are really important because reducing these numbers even a little bit was like a spark for us to make a difference but now you must be wondering okay there is food food waste there is bread waste but what you could have come up with other solutions so why did we come up with a beer well there is a growing beer market in italy with 3 million beers bottles sold per year and 77% of italians drinking beer this this trend is super clear for us so combining these two trends of baking high quality bread with consuming artisanal beer made perfect sense and hence from the desire to give a second life to the surplus bread in the form of a local social uh, inclusive and sustainable beer ibrida was born but what is the core behind this beer startup the core behind this beer startup is design so the design process really wasn't as linear as i just explained from problem to opportunity but we used our toolbox as we like to call it to go from empathy research ideation concepting prototyping validating and eventually come up with a proof of concept so we used all of this toolbox to build the idea of ibrida bit by bit now just to give you a bit um, just to give you some ideas in how we did research so from service designers we became beer specialists so we interviewed a lot of beer experts we drinkers visited brewing labs conducted on field research conducted experiments and we drank a lot of beer obviously and then once we had this let's say a vague idea of what we wanted to do we conducted a lot of test so usually at different stages of the project we we try to prototype our ideas and test them out and this was one ideology that really helped us build this idea into something that was worthy to go on the market so uh, the first prototype this is what this is from this two people that you see on your screen are actually professional actors yes actors so we gave them a story and they were improvising conversations or possible interactions with our story in order to discover unpredictable reactions that we never have never thought before so we created this sort of fake environment of a bakery and a, a and a beer place where these two people were talking about the product without knowing details about the product then again to test it in a different scenario we 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 made a fake beer lab with tasting experience ingredients uh, uh, some fake bread beer in order to engage the people so what we were doing we were testing the people's reaction to the purchase process and taste of a fake bread beer so we were explaining to them okay this bread is made with surplus this beer is made with surplus bread and we wanted to test their reaction we were also using sometimes words like okay this beer is made with waste because that gave a completely different reaction from the audience then as a next prototype we we couldn't ever understand the real science behind our idea 
So we actually made a home brewed batch of beer ourselves, cutting the bread like you see here. And then eventually we brewed a proper batch, grinding the grinding the bread. Exactly, like you see, boiling the mixture, and eventually we reached, let's say, a home brewed batch of India. Then, to test this home brewed batch, we organized an event, like a real event with hundred people in a real bakery. We here we were taking people through the idea of how a bread beer is conceived. So, from a bread to beer, how is it done? Using some machineries, using a bread, a home brewer, answering all the questions and testing people's reaction to this. So all of these prototypes were really important. I mean, in the first part of our journey, we had the time and resources, and more importantly, guidance from polymer professors to iterate and create a solid project. So perhaps the story could have just ended there, but what happened next? Let's fast forward four months from now. So how we define our strategy in the real world? April 20, 2019 represented a turning point because we went beyond the university walls. We participated to get it, a competition promoted by Cariplo Factory and the social venture GDA Foundation in food environment section. To our surprise, we were among 10 winners of out of 150 projects in Italy, transforming our project into a startup on the market. So following the benefits of this competition, we took about uh, and part of an incubation process with a so social incubator called MegaCube. And together with them, we again question our role as a brand because we didn't want just to be another beer on a shelf. So obviously, despite being an inno innovating and niche concept, we are not just only producer of bread beer, but what really differentiates us from the competitors. The project starts out for its promise to be means of social aggregation, so community activation and neighborhood involvement. That means also power to the community. Yes, that's why Ibiza is not just another beer on the shelf, but a neighborhood bread beer, that means. The beer is crafted for and with the growing areas of the city in order to encourage forms of economic and social innovation in the area. Building a community around a product as simple as beer could still be quite challenging. We need the right message, the right contents, the right beer to make a difference. Even that needs to be social just by the, the virtue of being a beer, but uh, we wanted really to push the limits of social identity towards initiatives that were aimed at activating and involving the community. So this is how Ibrida for Neighborhoods was born, a scalable and replicable model that leverages the realities, let's say, of the country in order to create high levels of engagement, supporting partners and encourages sustainable initiatives. Now, with ambitions that high, uh, that high, we needed a boost in production. So we switched from home brewing batch to large scale production, partnering with uh, Birificio La Ribalta that was in the same uh, neighborhood uh, in which we started the project. And then, uh, so we, we signed this agreement uh, that was benefiting both us and the brewery. So we finally launched our first edition of Ibrida for Bovisa. And Bovisa being a neighborhood in November 19. Uh, we collaborated with five local bakeries in the neighborhood and to procure plus surplus bread and this brewing for the production of the beer. As you can see here, it's like our first uh, industrial <laughs> production, but with them it was more artisanal again. And now we also did the second batch of uh, this beer. So. Uh, now, till date, we have produced three types of beers, Pale Ale, Porter and Pils. Each of these beers represent a neighborhood in the city of Milan. But to do all this, Ibrida cannot act alone, for sure. We leverage on synergetic collaboration with a network of partners, breweries, bakeries, local producer, community hubs, social association, it depends. So uh, who come together to produce their own neighborhood bread beer and spread our sustainable vision and values. 
On one side, we partner with bakeries and breweries to keep the production running and a series, let's say, of collaborators and retailers. That is cafes, bars, community hubs, event organizer. And to keep the sale going, uh, we also want to guarantee in a way that we are ethical and responsible uh, with the choice of the product. And uh, we want to customize the product with uh, really a high quality craft uh, bread beer. Uh, so uh, a win-win model that uh, aims to create opportunities for all actors involved in the system. And so until now, we have produced 6,000 liters, approximately uh, 18,000 bottles of beer and saved 250 kilos of bread. Let's move on, on the third part. So for us, uh, beer is just a means to build connections and meet different realities while keeping common values and vision. This approach allows us to coexist and grow with our network. And hence, this brings us to the third facet of Hybrida as a social aggregator. So over the months, we established several collaborations with different partners who believe in our mission, both offline and online. But especially on the offline side, we organized several events for also social and educational activities. So a collaboration where we actively collaborated with the community for a community garden called Coltivando, which is a part of actually Polytechnico di Milano, we produced a special beer with the hops produced by this garden. So we went there, we spoke to the farmers, uh, spoke to the people contributing to this community garden, collected the hops with them, and brewed a special edition just for them. And then this edition was uh, displayed and uh, for Milano Green Week. And this, this whole experience was really important for us as designers to enhance our role as designers in the process of building a community, building a project. Now, uh, in the last few years, actually, we've collaborated with a lot of different realities scaling from innovation platforms to corporate events, to live presentations, to winter markets, to sustainability centered events. With all of these events, our goal was to build a personal relationship with our community. Of course, it was not easy to continue these events since COVID, but beer is not as analog as you might think because there is an entire ecosystem of digital services that can be built around this product. And so our focus actually shifted from strength, or our focus shifted on strengthening our digital strategy and moving from offline to online, participating in webinars, interviews, digital presentations, and pitches all online, just, just like today, actually. So we developed a coherent strategy across all the different social media channels in order to shift the role of contents produced from delivering, delivering information to, to promoting or encouraging the level of engagement with our customers. We started social media campaigns to promote our partners, to educate people about sustainability, to gather feedback, to just to just have a conversation with the people we were trying to reach. We also invested in our website as um, now this would, we believe that this would do the talking for us to reach more people, to share our story, to share our products and to give a space for all our collaborators and partners. So as you can see, this is our website. Uh, please feel free to type in www.ebdavira.com and try and check it out. We would be happy to get your feedback also on this. And after this, we soon realized that we need to launch an e-shop. We need to start home delivering. Luckily, this uh, e-shop was sponsored by our brewery par partner. This was an important move to reach all of those people wanting to drink an Ibrida, but not having the possibility to go out of their houses, which is lasting almost one year now, but, um, but it's okay, we'll get through it. So during these two years, considering we actually started uh, in November 2019 and two months later came COVID, considering all of that, we were still quite busy in these two years and that really makes me proud when I say this. So this actually brings us to part four. 
Okay, so let's talk about new avenues. Uh, we believe Ibrida is on a mission against food waste, and the goal is not only to reach as many people as possible with our beer, but let's say more importantly, with our sustainable vision. So as well, we did uh, with very different mediums. And uh, the network, uh, we expanded the network of retailers and partners in nine different cities going beyond the boundaries of Milan to educate people about the small sustainable changes they can bring to, let's say, everyday life and reducing bread waste in other cities. Uh, the pack. So we designed a sustainable pack, like, and it's a special edition that could be used to carry the three beers, uh, like a gift for people, also a display for bars and resellers. Uh, the pack is made out of compressed cardboard with space uh, cut off of the bottles, and let's say, sweet and simple. Um, and then we have uh, from beer to bread. To take circularity to another level, one of our partners decided to reuse our beer to make bread again. So it started from bread, it went to beer, and then it came back to its own uh, bread. Uh, and it's, we can say it, it's uh, Davide Longoni who experimented a new type of uh, bread with uh, starting from the segale. Um, so well, this was uh, our journey as a service designer from a silly idea to a beer startup. We did how, but what we, did we learn? We'd like to share with you our experience from bread to beer. We have first, walk the talk. Uh, if we talk so much about sustainability only to sell beer, we are not doing justice to the project. We always share the story, values, the goals of the project first, focus on important, uh, impact and try to make it happen. Second, uh, test until you fail. I think you all know what does it mean. Um, you first, your first idea might not necessarily be the only one, but let's say it's always important to learn by doing prototyping, testing, and iterate, iterating your ideas. Uh, for the third point, uh, we really wanted to focus on uh, get the story straight. So an omni-channel strategy helps us build a coherent brand image, whether online or for off offline, and get the story straight. And fourth, the teamwork that makes the, the, the let's say, the dream work. Uh, you have to trust your colleagues, uh, ask for their support, collaborate, uh, co-create and grow with them. Everyone has a different skill set and quality and let's say leverages on it. So learn, grow and drive the change. Uh, and also always drink good beer. This is a really hard uh, suggestion from the heart. <laughs> And uh, well, as we said and done, we just want to leave you with uh, some food for thought, uh, if you know what I mean. And um, this is our motto and uh, really our motivation that you need really, uh, you only need the right beer to make a difference. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, connect with us uh, on social if you want and let us know about uh, your feedback. We are free to answer and um, discuss about your opinions. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, girls. Uh, first of all, congratulations again. I have to say that maybe is, they, don't, they don't say it because they are shy and modest, but uh, very humble, I have to say. But they, they just won another uh, competition so they they are now entering in another supporting program that uh, hopefully will take their idea even forward and so let's see in a few months uh, where we will find uh, this group of uh, visionary designers so uh, we are happy to have questions uh, from home um, um, before uh, commenting uh, the work uh, uh, that have been presented, uh, the, the beautiful initiative that they presented. Uh, then I see also um, Stefano Maffei into the chat, uh, into the webinar. Stefano and I are the two uh, co-director of the master uh, that um, is uh, presenting this talk, which is uh, Design for Food. And uh, we will say a few words uh, at the end of this conversation. By now, I leave the floor to the people from home that might be interested to ask something. 
or anyone who wants to ask something, of course, is a super welcome. I, I have a I have a couple of curiosities, but I, I I wait for for the others that may like to intervene. You can either uh, write in the question and answer or um, uh, open your microphone. Uh, let me, so I start with a question, and then let's see if I can interpret the same doubts of other people. Um, I, I ask this, and then we see that there are questions coming. Um, what what are the main difficulty that you have found in this uh, journey by now? Uh, the one that you really did not expect. Uh, just uh, as a joke, COVID-19. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would start. So it seems obvious, but really uh, we had to face uh, four similar backgrounds. As we said, uh, like the last uh, phase of our education was related to design uh, uh, product services and design. So that means that we are really um, following similar paths and methodologies, but uh, we knew that uh, uh, creating a startup means also reflecting uh, business models and uh, creating different um, roles uh, inside the startup. So we are really trying to integrate our competencies uh, with uh, others. And this is uh, challenging, but it's pushing us. Um, I can add uh, another challenge, which I see from the perspective of being, um, let's say, not Italian. So, um, so let's say since we're four of us and I'm the only one who's not Italian. And uh, when we were in the master, it was a safe bubble because, okay, everybody speaks English, you can manage. But when it became real, I started seeing that we had to communicate more and more in Italian because people need that. Your the person who's buying your beer probably speaks Italian. So I felt that uh, there had to be a transition in me also to approach this with an open mind to accept that yes, most like we need like we need we need it to establish Ibrida on the market. We need it. So I felt. It was quite a challenge. I mean, also still, my Italian is not perfect, but uh, let's say I can I can get by. <laughs> and uh, maybe it is uh, connected because we have a question from Matteo who say how much the master experience inspired you in building this project. Um, I will start again. If you okay, please uh, integrate. Uh, I would say that really uh, the university pushed us uh, in creating a strategy and testing the strategy because, uh, as we know, for experience during inside the, the work uh, environment, uh, everything has different rhythm. And you have to follow the market, you have to follow the clients, but while if you are inside and if you are the protagonist and you have to convince uh, um, professionals like uh, the professors, you really need to, to, to fight for it. So uh, it helps us um, believe in ourselves, I would say. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Akashka, sorry, maybe you want to add something. Yeah, and also I would like to highlight that uh, the master experience was quite diverse. So we had maybe six professors on the panel, on the project, on the course, let's say. And all of them had very different uh, competences. All of them had very different uh, skill set. And all of them had very different idea of where they were pushing us. So if one was pushing us towards business, the other one was pushing us to say, no, but uh, your prototype is not working. So you need to rethink what you're doing. So all of this dialogue that we had with so many people who were real like professionals, they were teachers, they were professors, but they were also professionals at the same time. I think that was really important. And that really helped us in building this project into a real brand. But how was your uh, reaction when you 
got the first grant. And so you mm -hmm. face probably the, the, the dilemma to decide whether or not to open up this uh, initiative to this, this uh, venture or just to say, no, 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 we were kidding. Uh, we go back to our safe uh, <laughs> environment of the service designers. Uh, should I start, Elias? Yes. So it's a, it's a very funny story, actually, because um, when this happened, when we won the first uh, grant, the first competition, I was in Berlin because I was pursuing my internship. Elisa was in Australia pursuing her Erasmus. Simone was in Netherlands for her Erasmus. Uh -huh. Francesca was in Torino for her internship. So nobody was in Milan. <laughs> And I was like, okay, what do we do now? We won, but nobody can go back to Milan and leave what we're doing. But that helped us because, I mean, so we were already doing smart working before <laughs> COVID, let's say. So we managed somehow to keep this going. We managed that, okay, maybe Francesca is traveling to Milan and she takes one workshop. If I come back, I take another workshop. If Simone comes back and so on. So we managed somehow to drive this forward because I mean, we, were, we knew that this is something that is valuable for us. This is something we believe in. And that uh, winning the call was just like a push that, okay, guys, you can do this. Yeah, I just wanted to add that uh, it was, uh, let's say, exciting for us uh, to start and uh, to, to compare to the real world because, uh, okay, the, the prototypes were uh, going well and we had uh, the possibility to, to compare and to, to share our thoughts uh, with uh, friends and families and whoever uh, approached our projects. But also we knew that, let's say, a reseller, a brewery, a Bakery would have uh, its own opinion, its own uh, small world. So we 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 knew something from the research, but we really, really wanted to to test them and see if it, it was working in a way. Mm. There is a question. Uh, uh, can you see? I guess the the chat uh, from Melba. Uh, love this story. I wanted to ask you what was people's first reaction to the taste and idea of Ibrida, for example, at Politecnico, and uh, what pushed you towards creating a startup and not sharing your project to an existing food company. <laughs> hmm. Let's break. Let's break this question. <laughs> first reaction. <laughs> first reaction so the first reaction was that people were shocked <laughs> because everybody was like what can you do this for real is it drinkable are you kidding us are you poisoning us I don't know so there was all sorts of reactions but um, but when we actually brewed the first batch with the home brewer people appreciated the taste so people said okay the beer tastes nice the concept sounds nice the whole idea of sustainability sounds nice so why not? I mean, we had to really move from people just being shocked and surprised to people really liking the beer. And uh, we didn't mention one prototype, but before the brewery actually produced the big batch, they did another prototype because they did like a 50 liter production just to test the product, just to test the reaction. So there was also another prototype with the beer itself. And when the brewery was convinced, we moved into the full production. Yeah, and also, let's say the, the taste of uh, bread beer matches with uh, the taste of artisanal beers, that it's uh, um, a little bit more intense uh, and uh, flavored than uh, the regular one, let's say more light. Uh, so you can smell uh, the, um, the flavors, uh, you can taste in a way the bread because it's more salty than a regular beer. But you, you, you feel different experiences while drinking. So I think it helped us uh, with the reaction of, uh, of, the, of people, yeah. Also now, one of the Ibrida tastes like coffee, just so you know, <laughs> because it was made with <laughs> rye. No, it was, it's not tasting like coffee, but it was made with rye bread. So you can really feel the difference because it was not made with a regular white bread, but a bread that comes from rye grains. So the beer also is like brown, dark brown. And uh, and you can really feel the difference in the taste and it leaves you with a scent of coffee, which for me, it, it was super nice. <laughs> yeah. We can, can I ask, where, there, there is another part of the question, but yeah. my personal curiosity, were you experts of beer even before this adventure or not? 
No, we were drinkers, but really, Simone was the real drinker, okay. and we were uh, appreciating follower, beer. follower, yeah. <laughs> yeah. following, and uh, yes, uh, in a way, becoming the expert uh, thanks to the brewery, of course. So, why not to sell the idea to another company? First, because we were. Uh, uh, a little bit jealous and uh, it, it was like a step before uh, the the real world again so uh, why to to share it before um, doing it with our hands and our minds let's say uh, and also we we were like trying to to set our strategies uh, our ideas and uh, experiment in different fields because it, one is communication one is uh, the the, the socialization, so the impact on the neighborhoods. So we really had the different approaches and we, we thought that uh, sharing it with a big company could really uh, converge toward a single one. So this uh, influenced our decision. I don't know, Aka, if uh, you want to add something on it. Yeah, also I think um... Somehow, and I, I also see it like this now, that Ibrida for us is, uh, is something that I can call that it's mine. So it's some, like, I don't have an authority on any other project I do in a design studio. It's not mine. Mm -hmm. When I work for Ibrida, I feel like, okay, I'm working for myself. So that feeling is very important, I think. Uh, then uh, we have another couple of questions. Uh, Elisa, uh, where do you see your project going in two years time? Where do you see your project going in two years time? Also, what do you want your beer to create in the end other than community? So in two years and what's for beyond community? Okay, sorry, we were looking for the, the question because it's a different panel. He, in fact, I see it's uh, complicated to follow the two uh, panels. This is the beauty of uh, the platform, Zoom platform. So uh, I can I repeat if you like, Elisa, uh, where do you see uh, your project going in two years time? And what do you want your beer to create at the end other than community? Okay, so... Um, as we said before, we really worked and project this startup uh, for like bringing impact uh, on the, the neighborhoods, on the city. And this was in a way working when we also had the possibility to share events uh, with the community and uh, uh, going uh, into the field, like talking to the bakeries, talking to the breweries. Uh, and so uh, discussing also about uh, sustainability and bringing up the topic, but as of, of course, uh, uh, the, the COVID uh, um, situation stopped us in a way. So uh, in two years time, uh, we really want to go back to this uh, social impact uh, on a way, in, uh, sorry, in, on one side. And then uh, we, we want to expand more. It's a scalable project. Uh, it works now for Milan and the, the delivery, but why not? We, we would like to, to start uh, uh, replicating the model also directly for other cities. So there is a question also about uh, scalability from Matteo. So maybe uh, in a way you answered it already. And uh, what's more beyond community? What do you want to create? I think um, I can answer this. So beyond community, uh, I think what is of the utmost value is the, that mindset of sustainability. So the mindset that you're making uh, a choice which is good for the planet. I think, I mean, this theme is really talked about a lot these days for obvious reasons and it should be. So I feel Ibrida is a way to start this conversation for products that are very simple, like a product like beer. Super, yeah. So, uh, then uh, there is another question in the question and answer, which is from Moritz. Great a circular idea. I can't uh, wait to try the beer. Me too. I, I did it already. Uh, I'm curious uh, of the beer raw ingredients. Uh, what percentage is actually bread? Actually, uh, it's it's uh, oh. he's an expert. Uh, what impact does the bread have to the taste of the beer? Uh, are you using the beer labels to communicate about the circular aspects of this project product? 
Ok. So, taste, uh, a percentage of red and uh, communication of the circularity on the label. Ok, so I will start and we can share. Uh, so, about the percentage, we don't really consider this in percentages. So, imagine like a bottle of beer and uh, a slice and a half of bread. So, of course, you can change the dimension, but somehow we know how much is it. And then, uh, as we said before, it substitutes the 30% of malt inside the, uh, all, let's say, all the ingredients. And um, it affects the taste. So it's a, it's a little bit more salty, as we said before. So you can feel it once you drink it and the, at the end of the, the sip. And as for the label, the label, I have the bottle. <laughs> So it, use, it says Ibrida per quartiere, which is about Ibrida for neighborhoods. And then we mention the story of Ibrida. So we mentioned that it's a beer which is made with wasted bread. We mentioned that it's a beer for the neighborhoods. We mention about our partners. So if the bread comes from a particular partner, we mention them, we mention the brewery. So the label for us, it's not just to talk about us, but it's also to bring up our partners and show to the world that they are participating in something which is social and sustainable. It explains why we chose the, the, the neighborhood and uh, uh, of course like bakeries on one are on one side and then the brewery as uh, its own side so it's really like um, yeah sharing all the information about the story and the process of brewing the beer. And finally, a very easy question. Are you measuring the social impact on neighborhoods? If yes, how exactly? Well, this is one of the most difficult questions ever. Uh, so are you measuring the social impact on neighborhoods? If yes, how exactly? So, um, okay, I'll, I'll try to answer this uh, extremely difficult question, but uh, <laughs> we, uh, I think, one of the KPIs, let's call them KPIs, for this is uh, the number of partners. So the number of bakeries from a neighborhood which are participating in the project, the number of bars, resellers who are buying our product just because they believe in it. So these numbers actually, the number of partners actually represent the number of people who are affected by the impact that we're trying to create. Then before COVID, we were also using events like we've mentioned before as, as a means to create the social impact. So those events were also, let's say a KPI to count that, but unfortunately that's not possible for the moment. And also um, since actually we've all, uh, Anna already mentioned that we wanna call exactly <laughs> to, to enrich this part of our startup, I hope within, uh, some months we will be we will be more uh, ready for a question like this okay so thank you very much uh, i like uh, just to conclude uh, in a minute by uh, sharing a few uh, key uh, elements about uh, the master that is uh, presenting this uh, project uh, it's uh, the typical kind uh, i project that we would love to see uh, and, to, and to help uh, uh, flourishing uh, as an outcome of, uh, of our master. So uh, sorry, I have a strange, I don't know what you can see, it's a strange, can you see, sorry? There's a, like a focus on uh, one part of it. In fact, uh, there is something that uh, doesn't work well. Let's try again, um, so, sorry. Um, Mm. Okay, here we go. Sorry, perfect. So just uh, a few, a few uh, seconds to to tell the story of the, the this master that we are starting now, and we uh, we think to start in October. That is exactly designed for food, and the the the, the real. Uh, core idea of this master, which is a co-designed and will be co-organized with the University of, Science, University of Gastronomic Science of Pollenzo, who is uh, connected, as you probably very well know, with the slow food mo uh, movement. Um, so 
from this collaboration, it uh, came the idea of uh, this master that uh, is uh, directed by four people. Two of us are uh, into this uh, webinar and the other two, Nicola and Franco, are from the Gastronomic Science uh, University. Uh, and it, the goal and the, and the interest of this uh, master is exactly to try to develop this kind of uh, systemic uh, perspective and uh, mentality, so a capability to uh, tackle the innovation in the food sector with uh, uh, this uh, uh, capacity to, uh, to see uh, the present, the future, to make a plan, uh, to understand the system and the context in which a given idea may emerge and may also succeed. Um, it's a combination of different, uh, it will be a combination of different uh, competencies in the uh, food area, from design to humanities to more technical competence from, from food technology and uh, food engineering. Um, it will be very mixed uh, of theory and practice. So the idea is to have, uh, uh, we will have lectures and workshop, but also study trips and uh, internships. So uh, it will be a very applied experience. And uh, so the combination of all this will uh, generate an approach that will try to mix also the different uh, uh, background of the participants. We are now uh, selecting participants from very diverse uh, fields and very diverse backgrounds. And so you are welcome, whatever your, well, uh, your background is. Um, this is very schematic structure of the uh, of the contents from theoretical to more applied uh, knowledge till, till the, the internship. And, uh, and finally, uh, the idea, hopefully, to be able to make it for real, and we are sure we, we, we will do it the next year, uh, field study trips, so field, uh, field work, and with the idea of generating very different professional profiles, including entrepreneurs, as we have seen uh, from uh, the tonight's story. If you're interested, you find all the information in the website. Um, if you are here, it's because you have already a good connection with all our social media, so you can easily reach us. And uh, um, these are the main data. Uh, we aim to start in October, uh, 12 months, uh, and this is the venue, uh, of course, in Milan. Uh, so, Thank you very much for your time tonight. Uh, a great thanks again to uh, Ibrida and the team of Ibrida, uh, here represented by Akanshka and Elisa. And um, bye bye, I would say. Thank Maybe you so much. The last question in QA, last minute question. We still have five minutes. Here we go. Um, Michael. According to the messages you have on your label now, did you already think on how do you want to approach and communicate the sustainability message? Where, how? So, according to the label? Yes, according to the messages you have on your label now, did you already think on how do you want to approach and communicate the sustainability message? Yeah. Last question before opening a beer. <laughs> right. So what we have on the label now is precisely communicating the sustainability message. So we communicate that this beer is made with surplus bread. We communicate that this beer is very local. It's made in a local brewery with local bakeries providing us the bread. And it also talks about the sustain, uh, let's say the um, the neighborhood for which this beer is being made. So for example, if this beer was for Barona, which is a neighborhood in Milan, we talk about how Barona is going through a continuous transformation and how Ibrida will help, or Ibrida's message or vision will help us help Barona to do that. So um, that's precisely what we use the label for. I hope I answered, uh, Ellie, if you want to add something. No, I would say it's uh, coherent uh, with uh, what we wanted to say. Yeah. I really have to say that uh, I personally appreciate very much your uh, um, intention uh, and your statement that uh, there is a 
you want also to grow in in the awareness of uh, uh, being circular in every single things we can do every day so uh, actually no matter uh, if uh, the your um, you can uh, actually uh, use uh, one tons two tons or ten tons of uh, bread but uh, it is more important if you can also start to make people think that uh, being circular in all behaviors is possible and so with each uh, of uh, our behavior we can actually contribute somehow to a general benefit so i think this is a very valuable thinking and um, really uh, I, I i i guess uh, it will be successful and uh, i wish so thank you stefano would you like to add something okay only this thing, I think that they done a quite good project. Uh, and a lot of the question that were, was asked uh, to them was also mine, just because I was especially interested in the model of scale out. How do you imagine to do this? But I think they answered so hmm. complimenting and stop. We will see now. Just the beginning. <laughs> yes, yes, but it's a good startup. So thank you. It's it's full of hope, I would say. Thank you so much. So bye bye. Good night. Bye everyone. Ciao. Grazie. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.